So I had somebody ask me how I created a specific particle system in a specific wallpaper, and I'll show it in a moment, but this is a different particle system using the same system, and I'm just going to kind of explain what it's doing. So there is an invisible particle right where my mouse is, and it spawns a child particle. So if I were to turn on the mushroom by itself, it'll spawn right here, and this top one, when you watch it, it'll go back and forth a few times, and then it'll despawn. It'll finish its duration, but then it'll immediately respawn. And this one that just vanished, it will spawn and do its duration, but then it will stop and despawn, and it won't come back immediately. So this one should finish shortly. And so what I'm trying to show in this video is that you can add a delay to the spawn of a particle by setting it inside another particle system and using that second particle system to control how often it spawns. And as you saw, this mushroom, when it completed, it just started up again. So uh, this one just respawned a second time. So this is my demon wallpaper. I have blurred her, so you can't see her. Um, it's these text boxes that they were asking about. So in order to make the text boxes, you need to make every different frame of what your character is going to say. So to do that, this is literally just the Hearthstone... Uh, I think I took it out of Overwatch, actually, like an Overwatch spray. So you bring it into your picture in Photoshop, and you need to kind of make it match, so I'm just going to quickly make some adjustments to it, uh, darken it a little bit. You can color match backgrounds just by grabbing your background layer, bringing it on top, and then Control alt g Clipping Mask, brings it so it's clipped into this image, and I'm going to shrink it just a little bit, and then blur it with a Gaussian blur. So I lose all of the detail and I just have some color information, and then you can set the blend mode of this background. I know I'm going quickly over this, this isn't about compositing images. But essentially I'm just making it kind of darker so that it somewhat matches the background. And I can't remember which one is the best one to use here, so we'll just go with overlay. So for all intents and purposes, this is what you get. Uh, this, If you do it properly, it'll look better. Uh, but we don't actually need this for the example. So I'm going to hide those, and this is the layer I'm going to use. So what you need to do take this layer, I already know how big this is, because it's, I've done this a few times, grab your text box and put it on its own layer. Once it's complete, once it's set up how you want, uh, you do that, and then you need to make a sprite sheet, and if you've seen my card video, it's exactly the same thing, but instead of editing a sprite sheet, we're building one from scratch. So what a sprite sheet is, is a very large image with multiple small images inside it. So this is one frame of our sheet. So I'm going to go to canvas size, and I'm going to make this ten times larger. So I'm just going to add a zero to it. And then we're going to anchor it to the left, and hit OK, and it's going to grow sideways. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, uh, Alt-Shift, and then click and then I'll duplicate it, and I'm going to bring this over all the way to the right side and use this little background image. This white image is what I'm looking at to line it up pixel perfect on the right. Now I can hide this background layer and this background layer on the left. And what I need to do, so there, there are 10 frames. I made it 10 times as wide, and I have two, so that means I need eight more. So I'm going to duplicate it and bring it over, and then duplicate, so that's, I need seven more, so six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. I have ten copies. Select all of your layers, not including the invisible background layers, just the, uh, the text boxes, and use the horizontal alignment tool. And now they're all spread out. We have exactly 400 pixel wide squares within our 4,000 pixel wide frame. And you can do the exact same thing. Uh, vertically. Just nest these within a group. And we're going to canvas size, pixels. This is 
4 times 190 is 760, and I screwed that up because I didn't measure, or I, I, didn't, I didn't anchor it to the top so it only grows down, but that's fine. We can just use our little alignment frame to bring it back up to the top, and then duplicate the group. And again, I know I'm going over this very quickly. This isn't really a guide on how to set up stuff. I'm just showing the steps needed to make a sprite sheet. So now we have two. Again, duplicate and duplicate. And use the vertical distribution tool. So now we have a 10 by 4 grid. And it's actually not exactly what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using... I have an already completed one that I'm going to be using in the example. Uh, but essentially, you would take this and add your text of whatever you want your character to say, and you have to make each one individually. And this is why I stopped using these, because it takes a long time <laughs> to make up things for your character to say. So uh, that's how you do it. And once you have the sprite sheet, you can open up a new project, and to make the actual system, you create a new particle system, and I'm going to, again, delete everything. So we need our system to be, this is my texture, and my naming convention is width by height by number of frames, so this is a sprite sheet that is 400 by 190 by 47 frames. Your number of frames is one less than your total. If you don't do that, it'll give you an invisible frame. And we import. As I said, the, actually, I'll do that. I didn't show this last time, but uh, I'll show you the difference this time. So we need a sprite. A sprite is an image. We need an emitter. It doesn't matter which one, because it's going to be set to zero anyways. And we want one of them to show up, and we want it to spawn instantaneously. Uh, we want a max count of one. And we need a lifetime and a size. The lifetime does not matter. Uh, actually, the lifetime does matter in this particle system. We're going to be making two particle systems. So I want my text box to last for eight seconds, just arbitrarily. And its size is going to be a thousand by a thousand. So if you saw the other video, it is now scrolling through all of the other, all of the frames in my sprite sheet, and it's super bright and glowy. So it's scrolling through because it's set to sequence. We want it to choose a random frame. Now when this spawns, it will choose one of the 48 random frames and show it for the entire lifetime. And then it'll despawn and come back and show another one. It's glowy because it's set to additive. We want to set it to translucent. So now it's exactly how we made it in Photoshop. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I like to add a little bit of mouse interactivity on mine, so I'm going to add the movement operator, which lets it have movement, and we're going to add a control point force set to zero, so this is pulling it towards here. We'll make the threshold really big, it doesn't matter, all this is going to do is make it so if you do happen to push it far away, it will always try and push back, and we'll set this to like a thousand something. And then we're going to go to control point one, lock to pointer, and add a second control point force. Set its control point force to one. So now we have mouse interaction, because number one is set to your mouse, and number zero, zero is what's causing it to pull into the center, and one is causing it to push away when I put my mouse on it. So I'm not going to fiddle with the settings, but essentially that's how you add mouse interactivity. And that's pretty much it for this. So if we select, this is our particle system. But all it's going to do is it's going to show for 8 seconds, and then despawn, and then immediately respawn. What we want to actually do is put that delay. So the specific topic of this video is adding the delay to a particle system. And in order to do that, all you have to do is I'm just going to duplicate this particle system. So I just went into the editor. Uh, actually, it's easier to go the other way. So I'm just going to add another particle system. And I'm going to duplicate this blank particle system and call it um, text box spawner. And hit OK. 
and actually I didn't do this properly, I'm going to rename this part of, um, so I'm just going to duplicate this, I'm essentially going to replace this one. I'm going to duplicate it and call it text boxes. And now I can go in and delete these two systems because they're just unnamed. Sorry, I don't really edit these. So text boxes and text box spawner. So this is just a default particle system. We're going to go in here. We don't need an emitter, I don't think. We need a lifetime of... This is the particle system where the lifetime doesn't matter, so I'm just going to set it to 1. The size also does not matter. In fact, I don't even know if you need a size. Uh, you don't need a velocity, you don't need a color, you don't need a movement, you don't need an alpha, and you don't need a... Actually, I think this... So you don't need anything. It doesn't have to actually do anything. What we're going to do... Oh, it's going to... Basically what you're doing is you're spawning an invisible sprite. So you might actually need an emitter, but we're going to just test without that. So we're going to go to children, and we're going to add our other particle system. So this is the text box spawner is now going to spawn text boxes. And you set it to event follow as your type. So that means when this system, and it's not spawning one, so I think I do actually need to, when this system spawns a particle, it will spawn this one as well. So I do need an emitter, sphere random, and it, so every time it spawns one, it's going to spawn something. I'm going to set it to a rate of 1 and a distance of 0. So it's always going to spawn it at its center point. It set its max count. So it's basically all the same settings as the first particle system. I should have tested this first. Uh, all the same settings as the first particle system, except you can remove all of the movement stuff and set this to a max count of 1. So now this particle system will have a delay on it. Well, actually it won't, because I haven't put the delay on it yet. The delay you set up by going into sphere random and set its rate to something very small. I don't know how small. I don't know if it's based on the lifetime. Uh, this particle system lasts for 8 seconds. I'm going to set this to 0.1. And now if I select... Uh, oh, and make this... Sorry, this isn't thought out very well set the text spawner to also have an instantaneous of 1. So they'll both start at the same time. Now after 8 seconds, both of these will go away. This one will respawn immediately, and this one will not. But if I'm not, I'm not going to wait a minute, I'm just going to speed up the time of this one to 3 times and then start it again. And this one is going to spawn, there will be a delay, and it will come back. So that's how I set up the character chat boxes in a few of my recent wallpapers. Um, if I can figure out a better way to explain things, <laughs> I probably will, but uh, I hope that helps. So this is just another particle system demo based around setting a offset time, making a particle system not respawn immediately upon despawning. I guess that's the best way to put it.